but um all right so i guess i'm going to start with some basic ideas so for those who are in the chat uh thank you so much for coming uh this will be my first episode for level design with me uh my name is seth i've as a little bit of background i've been forging inside of halo for 10 years potentially uh, ever since the start and i've also done some other games in the past um, i've had maps and matchmaking i've helped with playlists so i have a little bit of experience i'm not saying i'm great or the best but you know i have some experience and the point of this series is to i guess show how to think about level design in different angles and different perspectives and hopefully that you'd be able to pick up some ideas on how you can approach certain problems from a different angle so for episode one, what we're going to be doing is starting from absolute scratch. There is no design, there's no art, there's nothing. We're at the very beginning, um, because what I wanna do is have this series kind of go about more for the people who are struggling to start something. You know, maybe you've been doing a lot of maps. Let's say you've been a long time designer, done a lot of maps and you're just running out of ideas, or you're new to it and you just don't know where to start. That is kind of the point of this episode is to talk about the different uh, ways that I like to use uh, or different programs and ideas that I like to use in order to come up with something. So <clears throat> we're gonna go over three main methods that I like to use. Um, first off, uh, one of the things I like to use most is just a uh, notepad and you can do this on your phone, paper, anything like this. Uh, I have a full-time job so one of the best things for me is to just pull out my phone every few minutes, write down a couple ideas, and just kind of, you know, brainstorm some things that I would like to have in my map. So, for example, things that you want to be thinking about is like, how do you want the map to play? You know, is there any gameplay ideas that you would like to explore? Or maybe there's a particular aesthetic that you could just start writing down. Like, you could say Forerunner, even though I know I spelled this wrong, you know. Is there a way to make the size bigger? <clears throat> well, I could just do this, but um, so like for me, this is where I usually start is in a notepad, text, no art, no drawings, nothing, just straight text. And what I'm going to do is give an example of a recent map that I did called After Hours. And basically when I was doing After Hours, I knew that it was going to be a 1v1 map for a contest. So with that being said, I wanted to establish some gameplay ideas that I wanted. Uh, for example, I wanted the map to feature on the surface kind of a donut-y, uh, kind of like a donut layout, you know, circular shape, you know. So we'll go circular shape. Now this one is just brainstorming ideas. So I want a circular shape at its base, at its base, you know, and you, you just write down ideas. So for me, uh, for after hours, I knew I wanted to explore this idea that I called uh, checks and balances. And the whole point of checks and balances, I'll explain a little bit later. Um, so it's like, okay, I want to explore this concept of checks and balances, circular shape, um, lots of asymmetrical, um, asymmetrical catwalks. So now I have this idea of a circular map with some asymmetrical catwalks. Um, and because it was a 1v1 map, I was like, hey, you know what? I've always wanted to do a city map, um, but because of the player counts of like 2v2 and 4v4 allowed objects to be like extremely large, I knew that having a good looking city map was never gonna happen on larger team scale. So. I decided to finally do a city map for um, 1v1s, which gave me this idea of like, okay, for other things I want for gameplay, uh, it's hard to read on 720. Uh, let's see, if I can't edit uh, font size, let's go to 36. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> so, you know, so this is a this is something. The reason why I like text so much, especially when you're starting, 
is it's super flexible. It doesn't lock you into anything. Um, so it's, that's one of the best parts about text is it just allows you to just throw ideas out onto paper of what you would like to see. So like circular shape at its base, checks and balances, a lot of asymmetrical catwalks. And then I was like, you know what? I want to do this city map that I've always wanted to do, but never had to. Now for me, you know, that was pretty easy because I always wanted to do one. Um, one thing about cities that I like is rooftops and, and balconies. Right. Um, so I was like, okay, this gives me some ideas of like positions that I might want in the map. So let's, let's say gameplay. And I, I'm going to be jumping around a lot. This, I had no script for this guy, so it's going to be very uh, chaotic, but you get the idea, right? I was like, okay, I have, you know, some ideas that I want to explore. You know, I want people fighting on rooftops and balconies. I want this kind of like circular shape at the base of the map. I want to use this idea that I came up with called checks and balances, which I will elaborate on now. The idea that I, when I, I call it checks and balances, but it can be called anything. The idea is that any position that you're at on the map should have something that checks it and balances that position at balances that position, no matter how high or low it is on the ground. It could be on the ground. There needs to be a position that checks that really like and pay real close attention to that so so now you know i got these high spaces what i need to put positions on the map that even if a place is up high not only does it check it but maybe it has power and sorry, power over it so that i can weaken that high position a little bit so that was the the general idea of checks and balances and pretty much every spot on the map had to have two points that were looking at it and that could dominate that position, but also that position could dominate other positions. So it kind of created this real triangly mess of ideas. So, but, you know, so I, I came up with a concept that I wanted gameplay wise first and a little aesthetic and I just wrote it down. You know, this is pretty simple to do, nothing too crazy. So, all right, so I find this to be pretty easy to start with and it gives you, it's super simple, and it gives you something really basic to start with um, so that when you start drawing out ideas, you're not just lost. You have this here to kind of go by. So I know the map is gonna be a city map. So one of the things I thought to myself was like, okay, cities have buildings, you know, they have streets, they have alleyways, you know, so when you're thinking like cities, like these are the things that I have and whatever your aesthetic is, think of that. So let's say a nature, you know, maybe tunnels, rocks, cliffs, uh, trees, you know, stuff like that. Um, so, all right, so here's the cool part. So I got all this text. This means nothing, right? Uh, how am I supposed to take this text and turn it into a map? And this is where paint comes in, or for me, I use pencil and paper a lot personally, because again, I do this all at work just for the fun. So, okay, I could draw now. All right, so for example, I wrote all this stuff down here, basic ideas, nothing special, right? So let me go through. So I wanna, sh you know, let's say a city map, all right, a building. Let's put a little building down. You know, uh, Let me change my uh, sensitivity here. There we go, uh, there we go. So a building, simple, okay, maybe a street. Okay, there's a street. Now from here, I was like, okay, I wanted two streets, but where do I put them? I could put one here. I could put one here. Or, you know, I could put one here. But the idea is, you know, I decided I wanted a second street. So what I decided to go with was to add another one right here. So I have this kind of like street thing. All right, I got some streets. Okay, how about an alleyway? So what I ended up deciding to do, okay, so alleyways. All right, let's connect an alleyway, you know, type thing here. Okay, cool. So there's there's a map, basic layout. Well, I have these things, these gameplay. So I said circular shape at its base. Well, I have a circle here. I have this street. I have the alleyway that wraps around this building. Um, catwalks, well, let's start with catwalks or more importantly, how about rooftops and balconies? So, I was like, okay, one of the things with checks and balances that I wanted to do was 
if somebody dropped down from a high position, I wanted them to be punished for dropping. So in my head, I was like, okay, the alley, you don't want to be in the alley. So for me, it felt like a good idea to put a high balcony right here. You know, I probably should do this in different color right here. So I was like, okay, I want a high balcony. And I decided I wanted two balconies. I wanted one that was really high, one that was really low. Okay, so the balcony drops into the alleyway. They get punished for dropping, all right? The other idea was I wanted another one at a different level. So I put another little balcony here. And then, you know, I was like, okay, right now this side of the map is pretty heavy. Um, if I'm going too fast, guys, let me know, please. Uh, this is first time I'm doing this. I have no idea if I'm going too fast or not because I don't have a script. So I was like, okay, rooftops and balconies. So I got a couple balconies. So and I was like, a lot of asymmetrical catwalks. Well, okay. So I was decided, okay, it'd be cool to have maybe a little catwalk. Let's put that in a different color. So a little catwalk here. And the reason why I put it here was as I had all this um, stuff right here. So the map felt kind of heavy on this side. So I wanted to put something over here. So what I ended up also doing was putting this big building over here as like a, a as a fake play space, and I was like, okay, let's put a little balcony, uh, some catwalks, all right. So all I'm doing is just following the text, right? So I wanted some catwalks. Let's just throw some catwalks around, all right. Let's do something like this, all right. So from here, all I did was just take my text that was super simple you know oops and just threw them down like okay you know i put a little building here we'll actually not fill that in these are you can't go in these you know so i make them solid so you can't go into them so i was like okay put a building down put an alleyway down put some rooftops and the cool thing is you, you can move these around as you're drawing like so example um i'm going to do this live you know so i'm going to do the same thing but try to, to make it different um, so buildings, well, in after hours, I did one. How about I try two? So we'll do one here and one here. You can play inside of these buildings. Okay. Um, how about a balcony, right? Let's put a balcony in there as red and let's make it where, let's say over here. And the reason for that is I want it to be able to see this way and see this way. So this will be a balcony that can see into the buildings. Um, a little alleyway okay so an alleyway usually alleyways go behind stuff right so this is where maybe this might be a little bit long but let's put an alleyway right here okay and I said I want a street so here's a street here's a street and maybe you know let's have a street go here and here and here and here okay some catwalks you know maybe Let's put a catwalk here. Let's do a different color. And the idea is that from this text, you just you just mess around with ideas until you find something that um, strikes your interest. So these are the two main methods that I like to use when coming up with ideas that are completely blank, right? This is using my map after hours, obviously. Um, you just write down a bunch of ideas that you want to see in your map. And the more ideas that you write down, you could almost say that the map would be more refined in the end because you're, 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 I guess, uh, I would s not refined, but at least more flexibility. How about that? That's a better word. And always come up with like a gameplay type thing. Like I said, I came up with this idea of checks and balances and I defined what checks and balances mean. I mean, maybe you want your map to be campy, you know, but you need to just, you know, have that up front. And I would usually keep these ideas here very broad. Do not get very specific. Do not get into what is called micro details, the little thing. You want to get into the macro details, the big picture, the overall basic big idea of the maps. So, so this is taking text and drawing a picture from it. So again, let me just do it again real quick. So we have a building, 
let's uh we have street you know type thing all right uh another building here can't go in it ugly drawings all right so and there's like okay i want a little alleyway uh how about a balcony and a balcony so that's it you, you take these basic things that you wrote out say hey it'd be cool to play on some rooftops it'd be cool to play on some balconies how about playing in the buildings or playing in the streets and you do this with whatever aesthetic you want it doesn't have to be you know a specific thing so let's say you know forerunner you know you can say forerunner map and you go um let's say standalone standalone structure large uh let's see rolling hills maybe a cave and that's all i'm doing is just writing down i'm just doing it you know like just come up with random ideas this is really good for somebody who's really busy at like work or school that wants to come with ideas um so we're gonna get rid of that uh notepad's over with that sucks that's one of the first methods that I like to use. And I guess I'll show this off because when I did um, after hours, I did the text, I wrote down a little top down like that. And then I went into a 3D program and created, I'm not gonna explain Sketch up here at the moment. I'm just gonna show it off and come back to it later. Um, but eventually what I did is I ended up, you know, here's that street, here's that street. There's the little alleyway kind of back here. There's that high balcony that if you drop down into the alleyway, you get punished. Same thing here, you get punished. Uh, a, a little building in the middle and some catwalks that I did. So that's what After Hours ended up turning into before I started foraging it. I will come back to SketchUp later, but not at this moment. I just want to show off the, fin the rest of After Hours before moving on to more important things. So we're gonna close that, uh, minimize that. So text and top downs, like writing down basic ideas of, and then trying to just like throw shapes down. You'd also could just start with shapes. And this one is actually quite popular. Um, I'm gonna, sh what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you some shapes first. And you should be able to recognize the map after I've done these shapes, right? And basic shapes, you know, just like squares, you know, boom, a square. How about something a little bit more rectangular or another rectangle? That one's a little messy. So I was like, okay, I got a rectangle here and let's put another one here and another one here. So I was like, okay, here's a bunch of shapes. I can guarantee you, if you've played Halo, you have played this map, okay? This is a map that's in Halo, all right? And watch, I'm just going to do a few more things, and you should be able to recognize it as I go and finish these last little things. So. Oops. So there you go. This is lockout. So you have lift. You have lift tower here, VR tower here, sword base here, and sniper here. So the idea is just to throw random shapes down until you find something that strikes your interest. And it could be just this simple and messy. Again, I'll do it again real quick, just so you can see how basic it is. So like for lockout, you got a top mid, right? Okay, well, I want a little, I want a big tower over here. Oops, it helps if I don't look like an absolute noob. Okay, let's throw in a BR tower, sword, you know, then you have sniper, and you have lift. And it's just basic shapes. That's, that's all it is. Now, granted, lockout is the same shape. It's square and rectangles. You don't have to stick with squares and rectangles, which is the beauty of it. You can do just any 
any shape whatsoever. I'm gonna give you another map. Um, most of you probably don't know this map, but if you're part of the Forge community, you probably will. So let's, let's say we have something here. Okay, cool, a building. Or maybe it's an open space, who knows? How about let's add something like this. All right, okay, a U shape. Okay, what does that mean? All right, how about we throw something here in the middle like this? And let's just say, okay, I'm happy with that. That's my map, you know? So what is this though? And that's, I'm actually gonna load it up on a web browser to show off the map actually. The idea is to start really basic and really broad, right? You know, this can be interpreted many different ways. That's the point of this. When I look at this map, I might make something particularly, who knows? If you look at this, you might make something different. This map here is made by a friend of mine named Multi Lock On called Oblivion. And let's bring that over here. Let's bring that back up. Uh, bring that back up. Okay, so this map is called Oblivion. Uh, he's got a cool post, and I'm just going to scroll through it real quick. But here's that. So, like, for example, this is a good photo here. Uh, kind of show off what I mean by this is Oblivion in a nutshell. Let's open this photo up. <laughs> so, yeah, this basic shape here turns into this beautiful map called Oblivion. Granted, you know, it's a meme sometimes that it's too dark, but so like here's the, you see the structure up here, uh, right here in the middle? That's actually just this bridge right here. And also, if you look closely, you have this path right here, and you can see this little path back here, and you can see a path here, all right? That's just this U-shaped piece right here. All right now granted there's a lot more micro details in here but the basic functional aspect of the map is this this building this is a building over here <coughs> excuse me let me scroll down so here you can see that bridge again and he, because he changed the art of it eventually um let's go scroll up so here's part of that that u-shaped walkway and here's that building that big old square so again, you, you draw something really basic like this and what you do is you start developing micro ideas because this is your big macro idea, you know, big picture idea, something simple, something easy to understand. Uh, what he ended up doing in the end is he took this space here and created a little path here that allowed you to connect in here and come up high. He also created a low path right through here and here. All right, so he had these low paths here. He also created a spiral kind of thing in here so that when you came across this, you would actually spiral up through a spot here. And then he had a, it, the terrain kind of slope up into a spot over here. So in a nutshell, this is pretty much all of Oblivion. So you come up with this basic idea, and you're like, okay, I want to connect it like this. Maybe have something kind of like this. Or maybe I actually want to connect this to this. Let's do something different. And maybe I want to connect this over this pathway into something over here. You know, that's different. Or if you want, you can, let's say, keep this connection here like so. But let's say you jump over, and then you connect off this way so that you can walk across this way and look down into there. The idea that I'm trying to stress here is you wanna start with something really basic. You know, let me give you another example. Let's put a circle. Let's, let's stick with different shapes now. A circle here, circle here. You know, let's put a circle there. Cool, let's connect them. All right, let's put a little curved walkway here and maybe another one here. All right, let's put a play space back here, you know, where people can play. You know, let's create a little random bridge or a little random thing like this. Let's put another circle here, why not? 
and let's connect it to the mid there. The idea is just to do random, it's almost to the point is do random things and just start with basic shapes like circles or squares or triangles or whatever shape you like and then find ways to connect them. And then what you end up with, again, this is actually another map by another friend of mine uh, named Weston, or no, I'm sorry, Xandra, called Storm Peaks. And if I could type today. Now, I'm not saying that this is how they do it, but I'm show, what I'm trying to show is, I guess there's not a thread for it, but it's another map. Um, the idea is just to play around with random shapes, you know, at a high level, or not at a high level, sorry, at a basic level, you know, really, you know, random. So it's like, okay, circle, maybe a square that goes partially under the circle, maybe an L. This is totally random. I'm actually just going completely random. And maybe something here that goes off over this way. Boom. Huh. You know, maybe... So here's, a, here's an idea, and you just would build upon this. So that's the second method, is just using basic shapes to just throw down random ideas. Now, this next one is my preferred method um, recently, and that is just because I'm not very creative in general. So what I like to do is look up concept art uh, from places like ArtStation. And you're like, okay, art. No duh. Uh, let's. So, but he's like, okay, but I don't know what I'm looking for. Duh. Well, true. I'm just starting. I don't know what I'm really looking for. So, what type of concept should I look up? I'm going to give a few keywords that I like to use that you can always look up that just will find your stuff. So, things like the word environment art. So, Enviro environment art. <coughs> Sorry, excuse me, guys. So you just type in the word environment art and like just scroll through and see if anything looks cool to you, right? It's a very basic word. Um, I usually like to use the word environment art when I'm looking for stuff that has natural terrain on it. It's like, okay, this is a cool photo. And that's all you're looking for at, at the moment. I'm gonna show you something really cool after you find photos that you like. So it's like, okay, I actually like this. I, oh, I got lucky. This is, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to just save that off, pull that off to the side here. Cool. I like that photo. Um, and I'll show you what I'm looking for when I pull that photo up again. But you just kind of scroll down, and I just chose something at random, didn't really care. I'm just like, whatever looks cool to you. Oh, here's, here's something that's kind of cool. I actually really like this bridge. And you're just kind of looking for interesting shapes that you, again, like when doing the top down, you're just playing with shapes. All you're doing is just looking for shapes. So let's throw that off. All right. So that's if you're going with um, something with some natural terrain. Maybe you want to do something more build like buildings. What I like to search is architecture. Arc, if I can spell today, arc. Uh, gosh, architect. I can't spell today. Uh, arch, architecture. <clears throat> I'm bad. <laughs> arch, uh, texture. So I type in the word architecture. You know, that's another good word that, that you can type in that will just find you random little things that you might like. It's like, okay, cool, look at this. Like, this is actually pretty interesting. It's fairly symmetrical, so this would be probably good for like a symmetrical map, but I could probably could find something that I like a little bit more. Um, there we go. There's some cool, that's a, that's a pretty cool photo. <clears throat> so looking up concept art is another thing that is pretty, pretty cool to do and and I think that usually the best method is to just combine as many of these ideas. Like come up with gameplay ideas like I did earlier with writing down ideas. Then go look up some concept art. You know, type in the word architecture or environment art. You could, or, you know, other things like um, concept art. Just type in the word concept art and I'll do that here in a second. 
I'm trying to find something that I actually like here in the architecture part here. Not really seeing anything I like here too much. Um, nothing really jumps out to me. Oh, here we go. Okay, here we go. This is pretty cool. I'm gonna go over these photos again in a little bit and tell you why I chose these photos. So, okay, cool. Or uh, you could type in concept art and just scroll and see if anything jumps out at you. So the combination of these ideas is what's really gonna lead you to coming up with something to start with. You know, because when you're starting from scratch, you just gotta, you just gotta get the ball moving. Um, so nothing really in here, but this is mostly character art. You could say concept art um, world. I mean, here we go, something cool, but yeah all right i think you guys get the photo this one get the picture this one is not too hard to to really um explain you know you're just looking for things that look cool to you like i think this looks pretty cool obviously in halo this is not really possible well in the typical sense you know actually i really like this photo and i'm gonna and like i said i'm gonna go over these photos in a little bit but that that was that's really cool there Actually, with that photo, I think we'll actually move on to why looking at concept art is cool and what you should be looking for when you do this. And we're gonna start with that one that I just found. Oops. Uh, and feel free to type in chat if I'm talking too fast or you want to ask questions. If you want me to reiterate on something, like don't be afraid to type i know i got a you know it says i got seven people in here i would love to interact with you guys you know if you want uh no i do not want to print a picture i want to open with paint here we go uh whoops i closed the wrong one can't wait to get my new computer guys uh, <laughs> so that I'm not lagging as much. So what are the things that I'm looking for when I'm looking at all this random concept art? And the, it's the same thing that I was saying earlier, shapes. You're, you can also look at the art itself and get inspired by the art also. But when you're starting from absolute scratch, what you need is a shape of the map. So when I look at something like this, I see, uh, where's my cursor? Okay, so like, okay, I got, uh, let's find a better color. <laughs> let's go with blue. All right, so I got this cool shape here, you know. I also got this shape here, and these kind of shapes here. This is a really good piece of concept art for somebody who wants to do like a, a bridge style map, right? And I'm like, okay, I'm looking at these shapes. I'm like, okay, Here's a lot of cool spaces that it could be fighting in. Now, when you're designing a multiplayer map, one of the things that is difficult when you're starting with this type of method is, is connecting these ideas. So when you look at a piece like this, you have to think of, okay, I have this platform down here. How does this platform down here connect to anywhere else? And this is where you come up, you can draw over the photo like I'm doing here. So, okay, I really like, this a lot right here this is probably the part i like the most let me re-highlight this uh this here not so much the i like this so these are the parts that i'm looking at that i really like all right and you're like okay i want to connect these together you know and then you start thinking about that and what i would probably do is open a new one no open new uh, I can't keep them both open, really. I'll save. Okay, well, what I can do is do that. <coughs> so, when you're looking at this concept art, you're just looking for basic shapes that you really like. So, for example, on this one, like I said, I like this bridge here. So, what I could do is, like, okay, there's this high bridge. 
Okay. I also like this bridge here that kind of kicks out like this. Okay. There's also this bridge way down here that kind of does, you think I can open a second paint window? I probably can, but I'm, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I think I did before. I was just, I'm not gonna worry about it right now, but thank you very much. Um, unless you guys want me to, then I will so that you can see what I'm pointing at better. Let me know. Um, so like, I like this cool bridge here. So again, so that bridge kind of comes out and that also kicks left like that. Then I have this bridge here, all right, that kind of kicks out like this. And then I have this kind of like platform kind of thing, maybe this ritualist, I can't really tell. Like, you know, it's like a, maybe a ritual type thing happens. I don't know. It's some sort of platform though that, but it's a, you could read it as however you want. So, okay, cool. I'm reading it as a platform. That's one of the things that is cool about when you're looking at concept art is you might read this different. When you look at this photo, you might see different things. So, okay, there's a platform. Okay, cool. Let's put a platform. This, now I'm looking at this and I'm like, okay, well, this is pretty cool, maybe. This over here on this side, Looks like it's coming from something. So what I'm gonna do is expand on that idea here. I'm gonna put something there. So I got this little building, uh, larger fiend. You should have asked, uh, <laughs> lol, <laughs> no links, buddy. <laughs> larger, <laughs> why would you do that? <laughs> um, wow. <laughs> well, I could give you permission to link potentially, but I'll come back. Uh, it was an R station link. You know what? Actually, I probably with this type of class, actually, I probably, if I want it to be interactive, I probably should turn that feature off actually, because I don't really see these getting larger than five to 10 people. And usually the five to 10 people that are going to be in here are going to be really, I guess, invested. So what I'm gonna do is actually disable uh, that feature for now. Uh, let's go to spam protection, links, uh, filter. Uh, it allows you to time out and whitelist links, uh, disable. Now, I don't know if this is going to update live or not, but we have that now. Okay. So that's, that's what I'm getting at though, guys, is, is when you're looking at a photo like this, you're just going to come up with basic shapes. And then what I would like to do that, or basic shapes from the photo that you like. And then after that, you can actually play with this. So let's say, okay, I have a building here, a building here, this high catwalk and a ledge here, and this down here. Nothing really connects, and what you could try and do is connect it in your mind. So I want, let's say, okay, this is the high spot. So this is, this here is gonna be the highest point on the map. Uh, I was going to show you on the homepage, you can narrow your search results. You can sort by trending digital, yeah. Yeah, I just didn't. Um, I was just trying to go quickly through it to kind of get a, a basic idea, but that's another excellent idea is that you can sort things by, you know, trending or digital 3D or environments. And there's there's a lot of good tabs up there. Maybe I should show that off. I, I, I always forget that it's there. And if I remember correctly, um, yeah, here we go. So like trending you know, here we go, latest picks. So these are other great things. Like here's a cool photo. You know, what can I get from this photo? You know, there's this cool shape to a building potentially that I want to put in my map. You know, that's one thing you can always think about is that type of stuff. So 
Okay, what was I about to say? All right, so let's say I have this high ledge, but maybe what I want is actually this here to catwalk to actually go underneath this and maybe connect back out to this building here. And maybe this L shape here probably could maybe instead, it was low, so maybe I can create like this little path here underneath it. And basically, you're just gonna kind of draw random ideas and I kind of have this already figured out. So what I'm going to do is, so we got this high ledge, we got this building here and it has a ledge that shoots out. I would like for that to look over this and I would like for that to come down and around kind of like this. And maybe I have this high ledge here that connects to this with a ramp. And then this connects to here with a ramp. Maybe there's a lift that connects to here and you would just kind of just throw out random things like this. So that's that's an example with that um, with that photo. What we can do now is I, I did some other photos. So let's use this as an example. Actually, what I want to do is open that in paint. So this is my preferred method because I struggle personally with coming up with unique shapes. And that's a unique personal uh, struggle to me, or at least I think I struggle with coming up with unique shapes. So what I try to do is look for art that has unique shapes that I can't come up with. So let's pull up this one for example. What do I like about this photo that is unique to it that I would like to maybe design around? Well, I love this waterfall division here, dividing this space I like the waterfall, how it's divided into two spaces. I also love this back route with the terrain that has all these buildings that maybe can look down onto the terrain, right? So like for me, I was like, okay, I like this building here and this building here. I like this water here and I like this back terrain here. So how could I expand upon this? So I was like, okay, I like these shapes. What I like about it is, like, for me, I can see, well, let me choose a better color. Uh, purple should show up pretty easily. So, like, for me, I see these windows here. So, and what I think about those windows is, like, what if there was a player there that can look down onto this terrain to, like, punish people who are back here? That could be cool. So, we have this little catwalk here that connects to this little building here. And here's the thing, when you're looking at these type of concept arts, what you want to try and do is think about how you would traverse through these Type of things so for example let's say if i spawn down here in this area here how do i get inside this building so maybe what i should do is maybe add a door okay okay so i go into their building i walk through it and then i come around this platform here so from a a top down view that would look something so this whole area right here would look something like this so where's my mouse so i have that built in here little door <coughs> I have that built in there with that those windows that I was talking about. <coughs> Excuse me, guys. I'm so sorry. <coughs> and then I have this terrain that wraps around like this. And then there's that waterfall that I was talking about right here. Okay. So maybe what I would like to do... So I looked at this photo. That's what I liked. What can I do with this to continue it? So with this terrain, it kind of forces me this way. So maybe what I do, <coughs> let me go to a better spot and go a little bit lower. So I have this building here that I can walk into. I have this windowed catwalk ledge that I saw inside the photo right here and here that I liked. And let's say that's all one building now. And this wraps up and around like this. I liked the waterfall and what I liked about it is that maybe it'd be cool if you can fight over it, right? So this would be a bigger map, like a 4v4 map. Oh, where's my mouse at? Okay, there we go. So waterfall. Let's put something, there's a building on the other side. So what we could do is this terrain can actually, it starts off low. Let's wrap it around and up high. So let's just have this terrain where you jump over the creek and continue up high around this building and maybe what could be cool is that the terrain connects to the top of the roof so that you can walk up the train and then get on top of the roof here and maybe there's like a hole in the roof so 
So that's what I mean by looking for interesting shapes that you see inside of the inside of the concept art and then trying to figure out how you would connect the parts that you like. And this will give you, if you have nothing to start with, this is really easy to do. You just like, cool concept art. I, you know, I just draw all over it and come up with ideas. Um, let's click on something that's a little bit more difficult. So this one's flat, where some of these other ones are far away Vista shots. <clears throat> this is something pretty flat. It's kind of hard to um, draw a top down over it. And like I said, this is my preferred method because I'm not very creative shapes. I think the other two methods where you write something down and do a top down drawing from what you write, I think ends up playing better the most. And that's why I say, generally speaking, you want to combine all these methods uh, with that little caveat. So obviously what I like the most here, obviously the bridge and the building on top of the bridge. Um, that's really cool to me. That whole aspect there is cool. Um, something like this would probably be better benefiting of a of a big team map. Like this is a large play space. Now I could make this smaller and stuff like that. But like, okay. But let's say it is a big team map. You know, maybe the other one, like I said, I was talking about was more four v four because I'm gonna have this terrain wrapping around and things of that sort. Um, Maybe this one's a two, a four v four, or not four v four, an eight v eight map. Well, I got all this over here, right? Okay. If I had Photoshop, I could actually just copy paste it over here. But like, okay, if this is a big team map, maybe it'd be cool if this was like a one sided map, right? You know, you approach this base kind of thing here. But maybe what I would want is some buildings over here, right? To kind of give some cover and use to this side of the map as you approach this way you can also kind of see there's a path right here i also kind of like that so if i was to draw that from a top down can i shrink that okay so like okay uh i cannot all right here we go so there's the bridge right there's also this kind of like curving path that i see right here that i like that comes from the water so you kind of got this, um, where's my mouse? There we go. So you got this kind of curving idea. You got a bunch of buildings here. One, I find something like this where it's really heavy. Oh, what I mean by heavy is that a lot of the geometry is in one corner of the map. What I tried to look at is, okay, there's a lot of stuff specifically in this corner, right? So I would need to balance it out with potentially something in the opposite corner. Now, what is in this corner? Who knows? But it's like, I got this play space here. I got this bridge here. And I got this curving path from here. And actually, if it really, it actually comes from down here and up like this. Like, it kind of kind of goes like that. So that also means this pathway goes underneath the bridge. So that's what I like from here. Well... <clears throat> You know, you would have to think, okay, how can I balance something like this? So you're like, okay, I want something over here. I don't know exactly what it is, but I want something here, you know, at least. And what I also see is on this photo is there's this little platform, like cliff here. So what you could do actually, again, you, you look at the photo and you're like, okay, there's a cliff. And I'm doing this live, guys, so... Again, apologize that it might be going fast, but okay, I now notice there's this cliff here. Well, maybe what I could do is have that cliff hug that ramp. And maybe that cliff has access to a building here that allows me to dominate this position. So you're like, okay, this cliff comes to a building that looks over this entire area. Because right now this area was a little bit powerful. All the weight was over there. That's where everybody was gonna go to. So I added this, so I took this cliff idea, added it here, added a place that it can go to that's powerful, and it comes from this space down here that I felt didn't have anything. You know, so that's what, what you're trying to think about. This one was a little bit more difficult, but, <clears throat> um, and then there's one more photo. Uh, this one, yeah. This one's pretty easy, actually. This one has some pretty cool stuff already uh open with paint 
obviously it's like okay cool it has bridges i like bridges a lot bridges are cool bridges that connect buildings you know okay that's cool all right so if i have a bridge here connecting and a bridge here connecting you know what else could i do with this space and what i'm like so you're like okay i can go in the buildings all right where am i going i have this middle floor here this one kind of builds itself you know, it has a middle, it has a, a middle floor here. And what you could do is you can see there are these little awnings here. Let me get rid of all this paint. These awnings, all right? You could actually, this is like a double stack bridge. I think that's pretty cool because what you could do is actually connect these two together like that. Um, this terrain is pretty cool, but it's pretty low. What you could do is tuck it under. And what would actually be really cool here is if you wanted this play space down here, if you thought this was cool, you can like, okay, how does this play space down here connect to the majority of the map if you wanted this to be playable also? So what I think is like you could open up a little cave right here and then inside of that it gives you a way to go up. You could also do the same thing here and here. Again, every time you open up a piece of concept art, you wanna start trying to connect the parts that you think are cool. So I'm just gonna go ahead and connect this whole thing. Um, obviously it's pretty easy because it's got some connections here, some connections here, you know, obviously I want to play on this second balcony and therefore if I have to get up there, what I want to be is on just this piece. I don't want to be over here. I don't want to be over there because I want to keep everything kind of in the front here. Right? So like, okay, I connect here to here to here. Right. And this connects out this way and this way. Cool. All right, what does that look like from a top down? Again, this is one of those side views, so how do you incorporate that? Uh, so let me just start drawing again. Let me make this photo bigger. So, okay, uh, this is the back of the map to me. I don't want anybody going back this way. So we have a back of the map. Maybe they could fall behind this way and come back around this way, but and there's this connection here and it's two levels and then this building actually comes out like so you got the building here this level here and it connects to a building here and here's that terrain that's low you can go in the building through here and here that i talked about those two doors before we also have a building here right that has a connection here okay i think you know that's the layout of the map right so what you could do is this terrain maybe there's a pack path back this way all right, so let's do that. Boom. Okay, I think what could be cool is if you're looking at it from this angle, maybe there's a cliff. Again, if you have some natural geometry, maybe we should make a cliff over here. You know what I mean? So that this player here could come around this way and also look down this way. You know, so you were like, okay, how do I build upon that? Let's add a cliff right here. Um, uh, these connect. You know that's cool you can go in this way maybe i want this also to come out this way like this so now you have you can go in this building here you can go in this building here this building you can only walk through to the cliff maybe and that's what all you're doing is you're taking these shapes that you you like that you see inside of a photo like this and you're like okay how do i connect those pieces let's add some doors let's add some routes let's add extra geometry to this that kind of connect everything together and this is one of my favorite methods of using um <clears throat> so those are my main methods that i like you know you can use um uh notepad I should have actually probably kept that open for anybody who came in earlier. So let me go over those three main methods again. Uh, oops, wrong monitor. Notepad. So we have text, uh, top, down, random shapes, uh, concept, are looking for shapes and these are in my opinion if you can do all of these you will get so much farther um 
out of your map. So like like I said earlier with the um, text, just to do a small little recap before we move on to something where we're actually doing something, where I'm actually f making something. Because all this time, I've just been going over different methods and I'm gonna actually make a map and this is gonna be multi-episode and all that stuff. So for example, with After Hours, my previous map, I wrote down a gameplay idea that I wanted, which is checks and balances. I wanted a city, you know, catwalks, streets, you know, and you would just write down a bunch of things that you want on paper. And then I did the top down with you guys. So if you're in here and you have any questions before I move on, let me know now. Uh, and I could go over one of these methods again. Um, and before we start going on to um, uh, a 3D program like SketchUp. Um, these are the three main methods, you know, writing things down, doing top downs with random shapes, looking at concept art to find random shapes and connecting them together. Uh... Oops, I actually like that photo. I'm actually gonna keep, I'm actually gonna keep two of these photos that I really liked. Um, one thing I also recommend, while well, if anybody wants to, I'll wait to see if anybody wants to write anything. If not, we'll just move on. Keep a folder of a bunch of art stuff, right? Uh, that's a Vista. I'm gonna count this as hell and just create a bunch of folders. You know, like I have here, I don't use, I don't use my folders as much as I should, but like, you know, I got a bunch of photos of art stuff in here. So we're getting close to actually starting the map, which is gonna be, I think the more funner part instead of explaining these methods that I think is very useful. <laughs> All right. Well, it doesn't look like anybody has anything they want to say or anything like that. So we might just go ahead and move on. Um, if you're getting into level design and you want to be a little bit more professional outside of the halo universe right let's say you know you use forge a lot but let's say you want to get into a 3d modeling program so that you can come up with your ideas a little quicker i recommend as getting started to use a program called sketchup and what this will allow you to do is quickly throw together ideas and i'll show you how quick it is uh to come up with you know map ideas this is it might not, you might not think it's faster than going into Forge and throwing a bunch of stuff together, but I promise you after about a day of trying this, you'll become infinitely faster. Um, so I'm just gonna rewrite some of the things I had for after hours down because I'm just gonna go over after hours. Um, um, check hours, wow, check and balances. Uh, streets, city 1v1 map. You know, so let me just rewrite a few of these down. If anybody's new and wants me to go over what checks and balances means again, let me know, but I'm gonna assume that some of you guys were already around here. <clears throat> so obviously it was pretty easy. I will do a sketch up for a new sketch up uh, going over one of our previous examples, but for now, um, We'll stick with after hours. So as you see, I threw together a street, a one-way street here, a two-way street, some alleyways, just something to get some high level, or, or not high level, but medium level kind of layout ideas so that you can also see kind of like your verticality, you know, where are you at in your vertical spaces and what some of your line of sights are gonna be like. Um, this map has some problems. I'm not saying this map is perfect, but, um, you know, it is what I came up with in the sh short amount of time that I had. Um, what I'm gonna do is to give an example, a really quick example of like using SketchUp. I'm gonna go back into Paint, but I'm going to use one of those ideas that we just went over with. Uh, da -da 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 
low uh, the, and the whole point of this is just to kind of like show how fast you can work inside of sketchup where are these photos at um i swear i threw one in vista okay well we'll go we'll use this one i was trying to look for the other one with the cool bridges and stuff because it would have been a little easier <laughs> uh oh it was in hell that's right here we go here we go so to give some examples <coughs> i'm gonna go based upon what we did for this um where's my paint all right well i kind of remember it don't matter so i'm gonna put this on a second screen real quick and open up this and start new so when we actually no, i'm going to open up paint again <laughs> so with this there was a few things that i liked and we're going to start real basic and again when you're doing these top downs where you find shapes that you like you can make these shape as complicated as you want but for now we're gonna just start real basic so i had that one bridge here that i liked i also liked this high ledge that was here i liked this building kind of thing that was here that had this bridge going out i liked this platform here and then there was a high balcony right here you know so basic shapes right that's if you were here earlier you remember that from that part all right we're going to close that down, minimize that, open up SketchUp. So one of the cool things um, about SketchUp is it's pretty easy to make shapes. Um, I'm not, this is not a tutorial on how to use SketchUp. Um, keep that in mind. Um, so let's say I want a little box. So this is going to be my bridge, right? Um, uh oh, I forgot how to extrude the hotkey. Uh, push pull it's probably P yep so all right so here's a bridge you know random bridge <clears throat> let's say this is that bridge that's coming from that one building right all right let's let's draw and let's I said there was like this random building right boom push pull um, let's move this oops Come on, computer, stop. Stop trying to puke on me. When I get my new computer, this should be infinitely easier. <laughs> uh, move. Oh, wait, I should group it. All right, there we go, move. Why is this not working? Uh, why? Oh, I accidentally didn't group the whole thing. All right, whatever. Not a strong case for how fast this is, but. Uh, so a bridge, all right. And then I said there was this other kind of L-shaped platform here that I liked. I'm not paying attention to sc scale or anything at the moment. Right now I'm just throwing the pieces down that I need. So there was this here. There was a little platform here. <clears throat> and then there was one more kind of like going like this. All right. And let's just go ahead and push pull these up, make them a little thicker. Maybe this one actually becomes another building. So this is that same, you know, that same top down, right? Except for now I have it in pieces. And what I like to do from this point is you can actually make groups of these pieces. Um, and then once you have them as groups, you can actually move them around. Um, I don't remember how, yeah, there we go. This is what happens when you use like four programs and you have to remember them. So you can actually kind of play with the heights a little bit, right? uh select select 
select, 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 select. All right. Hey, maybe, hey, maybe this might be the map that we just actually, that I actually just do. Who knows? But I just want to kind of show off. Um, uh, move. Uh, all right. For some odd reason, it created a new object and didn't actually, um, it actually didn't. make this one a group like it normally does come on usually they turn them right into a group right there and there so the idea is that we're about to take this top down that we had we created those basic shapes inside of sketchup right all right, and then what we can do is we can play with the heights of these and how we want them to actually look in actual 3D space. Because you had this top down, right? But you didn't really get an idea of the verticality, per se, of what you were working with, right? <coughs> oh, excuse me. Create group. See that one, it turned into a group. And I said in when I was doing this that I kind of wanted this one to be the high ledge, right? It would be kind of cool if that was up high. So now that now I've actually created that same photo exactly, <coughs> but I still don't have everything really connected. I don't know what gets to what and how. So. Maybe let's edit, push, pull. Let's bring that out a little bit farther like that. All right. <coughs> Excuse me, guys. I'm so sorry. My cough is killing me. So let's bring this over more like that. So, so we found those shapes that we liked inside of the map, right? Now we can actually start trying to connect things with, you know, like the pen tool. <clears throat> so I have this high ledge here. Maybe let's go super simple for now. Let's just connect maybe these pieces together. You know, okay, so I got a ramp there. My ramps are not going to be pretty. This is real quick, not trying to be pretty. So let's say I connect that there. But, okay, I have this bottom platform. I don't know what it's connecting to i don't know how it's con what it's doing so let's bring it out this way <clears throat> let's create some thing like that and let's say let's connect these together oops you know i'm, I'm doing i'm going real quick i'm not trying to create make something pretty okay so maybe this building here should have maybe I don't know. Maybe it should have a door. I do not know how to do quick doors. That's the one thing I don't know how to do quickly. So, excuse me as I do my only method that I know. All right, so we got a little door here. Maybe, all right. So, boom. Little door in there. This was a platform on the other one, so maybe I'll make it a platform again. Something like that bring this down a little bit because maybe what we, you can do and and again all you're just connecting things right so you, you pull that out and like <clears throat> okay maybe uh and you don't have to like worry about how it looks or anything like that because usually when you're in forge you're like oh it's got to look pretty already no it doesn't maybe i connect it to there and maybe there's a door here that allows you to go in this building. And again, none of this is to scale. We're just getting flow patterns down, all right? So you got a bridge here. You can go in this door, maybe come up to this little hallway, and you can get to this hallway and maybe jump to this platform here. You know, And then when you're on this platform, you can come down this ramp, connect to this. This bottom mid connects to both bridges. There's a platform here. 
you know, you're just kind of like throwing random ideas down to kind of like connect things. So if you're somebody who likes to or wants to get into 3D programming, I would recommend using SketchUp as a starter. You could also use Blender if you want to get into like a real program, but this is something that's like really quick and easy to use. And you can create basic little ideas like this. Maybe and you could say, okay, maybe this ledge is too high, so this actually needs to be a building, you know, of its own. So let's put another door. And you just start come up with little random ideas based upon that that drawing from earlier, you know. And you're like, okay. Cool. There's that. Maybe what I want to do again, maybe let's actually put another little ledge maybe in here. You know, and now you can start adding play spaces to the map. Let's make it really short though. <laughs> and let's make this come out a little bit further so that it can actually get to this platform a lot easier. You know, maybe the point of this here is so that these can compete against each other, you know. Ooh, what happened here? Oh, they're, hi ya. But you guys get the idea, right? So this is why I think 3D programs are really good because you can actually now come up with a complete play space in a blink of an eye based upon some of those ideas that you were that you were discussing with yourself earlier that really basic level, nothing too crazy, you know, just something to kind of get the get the juices flowing. What you could also do, which is what I actually do a lot sometimes, is I make a forge piece. Um, so for me, let's say I want a eight, eight foot line. Let's make an eight foot line. Um, wow, I forgot, I was making on a really big scale. <laughs> but you can make forge pieces also yourself, you know? So you're like, okay, 32 feet. Wow, I was really zoomed out. Or is that 32 inches? No, that's 32 feet. <laughs> and then you're like, okay, 32 by eight by 32, all right? Let's say this is a, a forge block that you use a lot, right? You know, you can make the piece, you know, and then make it eight feet, you know, like that. And then you can create a group of it. And then because this is a piece you like to use a lot, you just duplicate it like you would in, you know, in Forge. And you would just, oh, there's a ramp, you know, and you could just build it like you would in Forge. That's also another thing that you can do with these programs that are really sweet. <clears throat> so those are the main things I wanted to talk about before actually starting a map. Um, you know, the different methods that you can use or should use to kind of quickly throw things together. So that was only about an hour and a half. Um, Now the question is, do I actually want to start on something today and actually forge something or at least start planning something? And I, I might go ahead and start. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the method of photos and I'm going to go into my, and my thing here, or actually, no, I'm not going to do that. What I'm going to do is I kind of, I know there's a few people watching that are, and if you want to interact and like, hey, you should try this instead, be, I might actually have a bunch of ideas and you guys can help me select some ideas. Um, <clears throat> so let me start with my notepad. All right, so <coughs> some things that I've always wanted to do was a, a Japanese map, a Bioshock style map. These are some of the things that I've always wanted to do. So for those, it would be underwater, underwater city. Uh, for the jet map, I would probably do like mountain base thing. These are the two that I've always wanted to do from previously. 
the thing is, is I tend to make a lot of 2v2 maps. And I can make them look better as 2v2 maps, obviously. But, I mean, I could make a 4v4 map. If I wanted to do an 8v8 map, I would do, like, a 4-runner uh, 8v8, potentially. Um, I have an I, I actually have something that I, I high level thought of before not high level sorry basic level thought of before like big macro idea I could I could just work on that but that doesn't show off some of the stuff that I want to talk about <clears throat> or that some of the stuff that we just talked about so I'm leaning towards this here um the thing is, this also comes down to the Bioshock style map will more likely be a room based map. Where the mountain bridge thing can be a mountain based thing could be a lot more flexible. There could be bridges or how about catwalks, uh, buildings, buildings natural terrain you know something like that so these are some ideas so a bioshock style map where it's underwater room and because it's underwater it you know you can't have an open aired underwater map without it being too weird um i have this kind of japanese mountain thing so <clears throat> basic concepts um i decided i don't want to do the forerunner thing um, if anybody else has suggestions, I'll take them. Uh, there was that, there was that that hell bridge map or bridge photo that I like photo. Um, let me open up my art here. So let me go to Asian. This one here, I really like. This photo, don't tell me I can't make any bigger. Hi yeah, this photo here I really like, and unfortunately I do not have a bigger version of this photo. <coughs> but what I can do is draw what I like. All right, so there's this building here, and there's this wall. There's this wall right here. So there's a a building, and then there's a wall that's kind of mid level, and then there's this terrain that's kind of down here at a low level. What I like is that there's this wall that maybe I could use as a play space that people could stand on, right? Maybe somebody can stand here and it's a high point of the map, but they could be seen from the low side, but also from the other side of the wall also. So this could be cool as like a, a, a pseudo bridge-esque thing, right? Um, there's also some buildings in the back that could act as a barrier to the map. So like, you know, there's this little little tower here a tower here so and it looks like they're connected like this with that wall <coughs> oops sorry i didn't mean to draw it so there's a building here uh jet map over bioshock <laughs> yeah i kind of thought you would say that it's also the harder one of the two um <coughs> looks like it's connected by a wall we also have this this kind of terrain that swoops down like this and swoops up and around like this. So like this is a low side and this could be a high, high. So the terrain swoops from a low to high. Um, there's a building back here. I probably wouldn't actually have this as play space it, because if I'm gonna do this as a 2v2 map, that'd be too much play space. So it kind of has this spiral where it kind of goes like this. This bridge here. And a building that you can play in here and here. Probably what I wanted, would want to do is create like a stair set maybe. Here. That'll allow the player to kind of walk up and traverse to this building here. And if that's the case, do I want the building inside to actually approach the bridge too? Maybe the bridge is just an offensive part to this building here. Um, so let's get rid of all that and clean this up a little bit more. 
So this is a real simple Japanese map. Simple walls, clean, but they're kind of angled. I, I wish this was could be seen a little bit better. Let me redraw some more. There's also this, this little building down here, actually, that kind of goes like this. Like I said, the wall that kind of goes like this. And a little tower here. What I like is maybe this tower can actually see down this way, right? So <clears throat> this is the part I like. This bridge, this courtyard, uh, this courtyard that's here, and this lower terrain that's here. So let's go ahead and um, let's go ahead and just for now add a stair set right here. And what I'm going to do is use arrows as pointing up. Actually, let me uh, get rid of that. So let's do a stair set here and here. Uh, for me, arrows always point up. So this terrain. So we start here on this low terrain. All right, and there's a stair set that goes up in this way, and this maybe would connect to the building here. Maybe inside of the building, there's a way to ramp up and around like this. That maybe connects to the bridge and allows you to come down this way. What I could also do is add a door in this little under awning, because that's what it looks like here. It's like it's a it's a miniature building, but it's also could be like an under awning. I don't know. There also, if you, it's really hard for you guys to see, but there's a gate, kind of gate watchtower building over there. I, I, I like that. So what I'm going to do is add that. So there's this little through path right here, like so. So you could just go right through there. So maybe I could have a path here that allows me to bypass this. And maybe it would do the same thing. It would start here, kind of wrap around, and kind of do that, maybe. So it would go up, 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 and up. Now, the question is, do I want this mid area to be able to get into here? And it, probably so right there. So what I'll do is create an up, and an up, and an up, and a through right there. This is gonna be, I like the fact that the wall divides the two sides and therefore like, I feel like I need, I should have a wall here, right? So you can come through here and maybe this, maybe this wall is a building, maybe it's rock, who knows, but it, it's a wall. There's the tower, there's the tower, the wall, the wall can see down into this courtyard. So I want this to be like a courtyard for sure. All right, so a courtyard. And I kind of don't like, I kind of wish this was at a different angle. So maybe we'll erase that. All right. Um, I could try and be a little bit more unique and put it at an angle. Uh, let's go back to brushes. You know, I could put it at an angle and allow it through like that. And maybe this gets turned into a corner, a curve in the corner. One thing I don't like about this particular one that I kind of like here is I kind of wish what, or actually what I could do is add some, nope, not that, I want brush. What I could do is maybe add a terrain cave system that allows me to kind of ramp up this way and overlook the courtyard like that also. Maybe, in, maybe this wall here that I was talking about might have to have like maybe kind of a um a prisoner style maybe spawn cave kind of thing where it kind of goes up and around like this and there's a wall here and so you could kind of for people who are spawning up here they could kind of spawn here all right so something like that potentially kind of like this a little bit 
So let's block that off. And what I, <clears throat> what I, one thing I kind of like about this photo right here is that this cliff side, this whole side here is open to the air. I actually kind of want to keep that. So what I'll probably do is um, keep that open, right? So this could be a map right here. Um, so that's an idea. <clears throat> hmm. Now, before we completely dismiss a Bioshock map. Let's look at some art, see if we can get inspired at all. So we'll go to Google Bioshock art. <clears throat> uh, let's type in environment art. I, this is a cool photo I like. That's a cool little ledge there with some stairs that go. Oh, it's actually an amphitheater, actually. The seats, a high high side, a little um, lobby. That's pretty cool. Artistically speaking, <coughs> I like the mood. That Bioshock maps have or Bioshock environments have. Like, I really like these type of moods here. <coughs> hmm. And the the funny thing is, is like some of this stuff is actually not too hard to make in Forge. <clears throat> but I tend to like <clears throat> that one Japanese map or photo a lot. I wonder if I actually open it normally. Will it be a little bigger? No. It gets depixelated. But I, I really like this photo for some reason. And I also like this idea of the light coming in like this. Oops. <clears throat> so I'm definitely leaning towards this. So Japanese map, catwalks, buildings, natural terrain. Um, I like doing 2v2 maps personally um <coughs> is there any particular type of gameplay ideas that i can think of that are new and freshing or do i just kind of want to make something um i mean that bridge that catwalk or bridge that i keep talking about kind of reminds me of damnation a little bit let me pull up this again um this Bridge here kind of reminds me of Damnation a little bit. Actually, it reminds me of Damnation a lot of it, actually, the more I think about it. Like, this courtyard is technically like shotgun. This uh, tower over here is kind of like um, the upper green. Uh, the difference is, is we have this kind of middle building here that... I could expand upon this middle building to kind of try and give <coughs> something different to the map potentially. Because the more I look at it, it's just damnation. Like the only thing I'll probably end up doing different is maybe this building that's in the back over here. What I could do is have a roof. And actually I have a pretty good idea of what I would mean for a roof. I have these like little roofs here potentially that I could put on the back wall that maybe 
I could put them on this back wall as like an overhang, right? That maybe if you're on this, you can jump to the overhang. Maybe. Well, I mean, it seems like I have something that I kind of already just want to kind of jump into. So the question now, <coughs> do I actually just want to go ahead and jump in it and start forging or call this for this particular one and let the video be a little on the shorter side? <coughs> so let's bring this back up. So kind of damnation-y. Potentially. <coughs> um, cliff side. Use a more central building. Building to as a place to traverse. <coughs> Kind of like with this idea here. So probably what I should probably do is put some windows on it. Uh, put when, well, sometimes, so the thing about windows is like sometimes windows make some, like if you open up something too much, it weakens it. But if you have some windows, it might make it more powerful. Um, so look into um, making sure it's not the absolute absolute power position position of the map that's another thing when you're doing like these top downs and you look at something that you kind of like you know write down some notes for yourself like okay you know i have this central building to traverse through i want to make sure that it's not an absolute powerhouse that's the first and fourth most thing what i could do is this little um building that i have here if I can fucking draw, maybe I can make it where you can get on this roof and there's a window here that allows you to look into and see all of this ramp here. So, um, have window from low roof that looks into building, building and can see it all. So. <clears throat> cliffside you know this is more of aesthetic you know i want cliffside slash mountain wall you know just kind of like how it is on here i want this kind of uh, oops i kind of want this wall back here and i kind of want this open down here Central building, this is the kind of differentiate itself. This is kind of to, to make it a little bit different from damnation, I think. Especially the fact that if I can make it where the central building will allow me to connect to the bridge, that could be pretty interesting. Um, as long as this bridge, like the problem is, is this bridge is kind of in, kind of deep in this corner. It's actually It's actually closer to this corner than it is this corner. So I feel like, there could be some potential spawn problems here from the bridge. That's why I added this little prisoner thing here. So what I might do is I had this terrain idea down here or this ridge. What I could potentially do is actually connect something here to maybe a high part. Uh, I was speaking about um, a potential uh, rooftop awning of a building. So maybe, because I have this terrain piece down here that allows me to go through this way into the courtyard. I also have this here. So it's like most of the time this doorway is not going to get used, but I think one of the cool things about this doorway is it's really safe. Like this is a this is probably going to be the safest spot on the map right here. So 
if you do come up this way, I need this to be open, right? So let's turn this into something here. <sighs> something like that. I'm still gonna have this spawn cubby down here, right? I'm going to be heading out soon, but I will be catching up on anything I missed later. Good stuff so far. Hey, I really appreciate Larger Fiend. I, what I do plan on doing is uploading these to YouTube. Uh, for episode one, I'm actually probably going to divide it into two parts. The part where it only talks about how to come up with stuff, and then this actual part here. So you'll be able to actually just, you know, watch them as separate parts. But I really appreciate you coming in. You were the first one here and you stayed the whole time. It was awesome. So I could keep this spawn hub for sure. So what this could be is like two separate buildings maybe. What this terrain piece here, even though it comes up at a higher spot, maybe it connects to a mid floor balcony of a building in this corner. And that's what I'm thinking is this is gonna be a mid floor balcony right here. And everything above this here, this prisoner spawn cubby kind of thing, is going to be like an angled roof kind of thing that you can walk across on this side of the map. And hopefully that will allow this bridge not to be so dominating. The, the part I'm scared about is like, if I spawn here in the prisoner room, it's safe. But where the fuck do I go? You know, so that's something to keep note of. Um, and keep notes, like always keep notes. So uh, make sure spawns in the prisoner cubby have access to a good route. Route semi safe from bridge. <clears throat> okay um the whole point of low train is this is supposed to be a disadvantage the only time but here's the thing the only time you're going to spawn here is when people are camping over here so you have all this middle here that divides the two sides so being down here shouldn't be ever a true problem now granted you could have somebody who's camping in here and camping over here and four spawn over here but i like it when teams set up like this and four spawns i think that's clever um clever teamwork and I'm, I'm okay with promoting that the only thing i have to make sure is that when you spawn here like i said maybe you have access to this building so you can go inside or you swoop all the way around which is really safe from here but not so much from here so having access to this building here is going to be really important um, you know, I might have to put like a piece of cover in the courtyard, maybe, uh, maybe, maybe a statue or statue or well in the middle of the, uh, outside court or outside ridge, you know, maybe put a little bit of story into the map, you know, maybe people collect water outside of the city. You know, maybe there's a little well right here that you can use to kind of protect yourself maybe. Um, <clears throat> so that that's what I see as the worst setup of the map is two people camping like this and this, forcing you to spawn down here. But with that being said, this is one person versus potentially two people. So I'm not totally opposed against that, but even if it's, if somebody's camping back here, 
So if somebody's camping here and somebody's camping here <coughs> and I spawn here, it's just a 1v1. This guy has no influence whatsoever on <coughs> on the fight. It forces you to spawn here, which, you know, is cool, but he doesn't influence the fight. So I'm I'm actually kind of okay with this at for now. <coughs> Excuse me, guys. I'm so sorry about the cough. Um. So. So let's think of anything else gameplay wise that I can think of. <coughs> Um, it's a 2v2 map. S uh, Damnation semi inspired. Uh, there's going to be a cliffside mountain wall. I want a more central building place to traverse and look into, making sure, but making sure it's not the absolute power position of the map. Um, maybe so. So the idea here is that you should be able to get to any. You should be able if you're if you're holding the middle building. The idea is that <clears throat> you can get into the action. Like that's the point of this middle building is to always stay in the action. So depending on scale, you know, this map might be a little small. This might be actually closer to a 1v1 map. So I might have to scale up in order to make it a 2v2 map. Who knows? Or maybe I might switch it to 1v1. Who knows? Uh, corner area that has a rooftop that you can get on opposite of the catwalk. Yeah. So basically I want this like natural path with that rock ridge kind of thing it kind of will follow like this going behind here and then this building here will connect into the wall but there will be a rooftop that you could jump on kind of thing uh <clears throat> so it's been about an hour, 50 minutes, kind of something like that. I think for the most part, <clears throat> this is pretty good for an episode one. I'm a lot. I'm glad that I had as many people in here as I did. Um, nobody was that chatty, but there was a lot of people in here. You know, I'm glad that you guys came. Uh, if you're watching this on YouTube, uh, thank you for watching. I really do appreciate it. We're gonna leave at this point here, and probably the next time I, um, <clears throat> the next episode, we're probably gonna jump into Google SketchUp, um, and kind of start messing around with some ideas, and then we we'll, might also look into some extra art besides this one photo, so that we can, um maybe find some aesthetics that might fit the map a little bit. So I want to say thank you so much for those who came out and those who stayed for as long as you did. Um, I will see you guys hopefully next Wednesday. This is going to be an every Wednesday thing. I, the only reason why I wouldn't do it is <clears throat> if I'm more sick than I already am today. So, um, so I should be, we should be live every Wednesday. So, um, I hope to see you guys next time. Uh, if you have any comments or feedback, uh, please let me know. Uh, we have a thread on forgehub.com that you can go to to leave feedback or ask questions or maybe you want me to talk about a particular thing. Uh, today I was talking about methods, you know, that you can use to get started. Uh, but please leave any comments or suggestions in the comments below or on the official thread on forgehub.com. Um, I will talk to you guys later.